Hey all, here are Wes Reviews. In this video, we're taking a nostalgic retro throwback at two digicams from the early 2000s by Kodak. This is the V570 and the V705, and this camera came out in 2006, making it now over 17 years old. What makes it unique, though, is it claims to be the world's first point-and-shoot to have two camera lenses, one which is an ultra-wide angle and the other which is a 5 times continuous optical zoom lens. Of course, in 2024 standards, it's no longer unfamiliar territory to have multiple lenses, especially on a modern smartphone. LG popularized this with the G5 a couple of years back, and ever since we've been seeing a growing number of camera sensors on the back of our devices for other purposes, including telephoto as well as macro. And in the camera world, light infamously took this point to the extreme with the L16 that we also did a throwback review on about this time last year that has 16 camera lenses, does an insane amount of computational photography, but it's crazy to see how Kodak tried to experiment with this idea back in 2006. In this particular family, there was actually one other model called the V630. The difference compared to the V570 and the V705, though, is that the second camera lens isn't really an ultra wide angle, but rather an extra telephoto lens that's able to magnify and zoom in up to 10 times optically, despite still having a very slim profile that doesn't really physically protrude outwards. So you could either pick between an ultra telephoto option or, like the two models that we have in front of us, one with an ultra wide wide angle lens instead. That being said, Kodak never came out with an ultimate model that combined both of those features together, possibly because it wasn't met with critical acclaim when it came out, just because of the slightly higher price tag, they retailed for $400, expensive for a consumer grade point and shoot camera, and relatively low megapixel count as well. So the V570 here came with 5 megapixels, the V610 again with a 10 times optical zoom lens is 6 megapixels, and then the V705 over here is a 7 megapixel camera. Now that being said, all three of these cameras use the same sensor underneath, which was a 1 over 2.5 inch CCD. Of course, that's quite different compared to the modern CMOS sensors found on smartphones, as well as modern day point and shoots. And in recent years, I would say Digicams have made a bit of a resurgence in their popularity due to the nostalgia of shooting on one of these older cameras, even though Functionally speaking, of course, it's nothing that our smartphones can't do. The CCD sensors found on these cameras produces a slightly more vibrant, almost dreamlike looking images. And there's a quality to the photos, even though it's technically less sharp, has a little bit more grain that almost simulates the experience of film cameras. Even though everything from shutter speed to the technicality of the photo, objectively speaking, is not as great. But subjectively, there might be some emotional weight attached to the photos from a CCD sensor. So anyways, these cameras came in multiple colors, including black as well as silver. I have to say that Kodak did do a pretty good job on the design as one of their more premium point and shoots. It's crafted out of aluminum alloy and has a decent density to it, even though it still is quite compact. And here it is next to say a modern day smartphone. You can tell that it's gonna be actually still quite easy to slip into a pocket, for example, and take with you when on the road. There is a xenon flash located on the top right-hand corner, which of course is going to be brighter compared to more energy efficient LED flashes found on smartphones that we have today. Otherwise, the glass and optics here are created by Schneider, which is a brand we've also seen collab with LG and on some Blackberry smartphones as well, as an alternative to say Hasselblad or Zeiss that Sony often collabs with. Again, there's the Periscope 5 times optical zoom lens, as well as the ultra wide down below and the very bottom here features a standard tripod mount also one of the conveniences of a dedicated camera form factor is it might be a little easier to mount there's a proprietary kodak kind of dock that you can also pick up to sync information with a computer i will say though that the v630 does have built-in bluetooth which is missing from the v570 as well as the v705 and built-in bluetooth allows you to wirelessly transfer some of the photos over to smartphones which is kind of an interesting smart connected functionality especially on a early 2000s camera now you can also find the battery compartment very top just featured some microphones as well as easy launch keys to review some of the photos that you're taking go into some scene selection modes or begin to record video at a click 
a power key as well as a two-stage camera shutter key for focusing and then pressing all the way down on. And here is the V705, which again, aside from a slightly higher megapixel count, actually doesn't change anything at all. The layout as well as controls are still identical. Overall, it's a clean and pretty attractive looking design with that oversized electronic lens protector that just flicks over to the right whenever you turn on the camera. And surprisingly, the process of actually turning on for picture taking is still relatively quick. And the controls are relatively intuitive. You can use the dial here to zoom in and out. You'll tell there is a slight jump as it transitions between the ultra wide angle and the primary lens with telephoto. And afterwards in the entire telephoto zoom range, which is represented by this white bar, you can tell that it's zooming in and out very smoothly without losing any details between the one times to five times range. And then when it moves past this point into the yellow fraction, it will then start to use some digital amplification to get you even closer to your subjects. But the images in this particular range will no longer look quite as crisp or sharp. We can also tap on the camera key here once to jump into the aforementioned scene selection mode. You can find sunset, candlelight, panning shot, night, children, beach, text, firework, flower, self-portraits, night landscape, close-ups, sports, panoramic, left to right, so on and so forth. So panorama shots are actually quite easy to capture. So here's a quick example. I'm going to capture a shot and afterwards it's going to tell me to then pan and move over to the right and you're able to stitch up to three images together. It will take a couple of seconds for the camera here to process. And the results really aren't shabby at all. As you can tell here, you can get even wider field of view than the already wide angle lens built onto that second sensor. So this can again, stitch up to three photos side by side, making it actually a pretty popular choice for realtors that are trying to do a home tour and then posted onto listing sites so you're able to see the entire room in a single photo. Now we're also able to move left and right here to change the exposure value down below. If you want to manually kind of blow things out a little bit more and add more light into your shots, you can play around with that. Tapping on the menu key here allows you to bring up options including a self timer, changing the resolution of your photos. One thing I will point out here is because again the sensor size on all of these cameras are the same and this one has a higher megapixel count than the V570 which is 5 megapixels, you may assume that this one will create better photos and in well lit conditions that's definitely the case. More megapixels means that you can zoom and crop in a little bit more, blow things up and you still retain more detail. However in lower light conditions it's actually an area where the V570 has an advantage because fewer megapixels on the same surface area sensor means that each pixel is technically larger in size and it's able to collect a little bit more light. So that's kind of a trade-off between the two. But anyways, you can also find white balance and ISO properties, even some colors. Exposure metering can all be adjusted on here as well. And even if the camera is turned off, you can still tap on the album key there down below to begin to review some of your favorite photos. These are some demo images taken from the camera just to serve as an illustration, cycling left and right. So there's kind of a easy easy on and off functionality here and the lens there will still be closed as you can tell. Uh, this is an example of some of the again a little bit more nostalgic looking photos and qualities that you're able to get from a CCD sensor. You can zoom in and out as well using the dial here on the side to expand on the entire album view. Tap on the share key we're able to print, email, uh, if we are connected to our computer using the optional dock. Reviewing some of the other images I captured with the camera earlier this is an example in lower light conditions, you can tell it becomes a lot more difficult to see, especially with the zoomed in telephoto, it becomes progressively darker as you can tell, especially if you aren't using the xenon flash at night, that is. But in more brightly lit conditions, it can still look all right. This is the ultra wide angle lens, by the way, standing in the exact same spot, not the panoramic mode, but just the default ultra wide angle, you can still get plenty of details here and there's not too much lens distortion on the corners. Although some of the textures of the clouds might be getting a little bit washed out since technologies including HDR haven't really been invented yet in 2006. But that being said, it doesn't look too shabby considering the age of this camera. And we can also take a look at, this is the normal one times lens. And then this is the five times optical zoom. So it still looks relatively sharp as a result. And you can also take a look at, this is the 10 times digital magnification. So of course it's gonna be losing some of the details, starting to become a little bit more fuzzy, but you are able to get a little bit closer to your shot. So again, the difference between the regular 
lens, the ultra wide angle, as well as the five times and also the 10 times zoom. This is what it looks like under a more ideal bright and sunny day where you can tell that the blues captured by the CCD sensor are just really beautiful looking. Is it the most accurate in the world? Definitely not. Again, we are still crushing some details in some of the shadows. That being said, there is again that sense of nostalgia. Again, another example of what the ultra wide angle versus normal lens versus five times and also 10 times zoom look like. Here's another example of getting really up close, kind of a macro shot using this camera. Although again, indoors, it definitely looks quite dark, especially if you're zooming in with that periscope telephoto lens. Uh, but still, you're getting a decent amount of clarity, I would say, and sharpness and getting a little bit of both okay getting further away but again this is not really a large sensor camera so at the end of the day it doesn't have the most shallow depth of field unless you are zooming all the way in just some other examples here so in more brightly lit conditions you can still do all right and there is a little bit of ois on board as well that mitigates some degree of shakiness if you are a little bit unstable when taking the shot so that is more or less it as far as a again very nostalgic throwback look at the kodak v570 and the v705 basically kodak's family of dual lens cameras point and shoots from the early 2000s these are mostly forgotten about models to the vast majority of folks out there i just thought it was actually quite innovative for their time and now looking back a lot of these designs and ideas have been carried over into the smartphones we have in our pockets today now should you go out and buy one of these cameras in 2024 i would say probably not at least for the vast majority of folks out there it still is kind of redundant compared to what we can already do on our phones with a similar setup. That being said, this is definitely a quirky camera that has its place in history for just trying something new and in this case definitely was a bit ahead of its time. So you can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a nostalgic look back at the Kodak dual lens cameras of the early 2000s.